Hello everybody, I'm Tycho Satcho. Welcome to a Company of Heroes 2 Shoutcast. We have, uh, it's a beta match, obviously. We're still in the beta. Beta gonna end in a few days, and then I think pre-orders will get to keep playing. Originally that wasn't the plan, I don't know, or they didn't tell us, but uh, you'll get to keep playing if you pre-order the game, so I'm not gonna get to keep playing unless I decide to buy it. We have Siberian up-and-comer. Everybody's watching this kid playing as Ostea versus uh, I am Chetslov playing as the Soviets, and this is one of the many, 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 many replays that were just posted on coh2.org from Ip Kai Fung's massive tournament that's going on. It's a triple bracket tournament. There's a European bracket, uh, Asian Oceanic bracket, and an American bracket, and he's running all three of them simultaneously. It's a huge tournament. It's going to figure out the best Company Heroes players, and then soon after that, uh, the Frontline Network's running a tournament, so we got a shit ton of tournaments down here in the beta, sort of trying to give Relic some stuff so that they can look at the game and see what's working, what isn't working at high levels of play, um, what make what do good players do, what bad players do. Running through this thing, you almost cap it halfway, and I've said this before, but... Uh, oh, speaking of saying things before, well, first I'll say this. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like you should just hang out and take it. Anyways, uh, I f if you watched my last shoutcast, which you totally should because I make some funny accents in it, uh, you'll remember I said, what was I going to ask you guys, but then I forgot what I was going to... Here's what I want to ask. Does everyone like long games? Like whenever I download a replay, I usually go for something like, oh, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. But there are like 45 minute, 50 minute replays out there. And eventually I would like to get a good mix. But um, if I have my choice, usually I go for shorter games just because uh, they tend to be more concentrated. They don't just get dragged out. But um, if everybody loves long games and I can start casting those too, um, I don't know. I haven't watched enough long games to see if they're any fun or not. Sometimes they just become stupid back and forth. Man, this sound seems pretty quiet, but I can never tell what's quiet or not until the uh, fighting starts up, because things get really, really loud in Company Heroes 2. The volume disparities seem to be whatever. Nobody cares. Should I turn off the taskbar? No, then you don't get the minimap. But look how pretty this is. This is nice. See, you can see some stuff. What they have to do is get rid of this massive bar down here. <laughs> um, make some stuff smaller. There's too much shit on the screen. Even Dawn, and so Dawn of War 2 is a lot better than this. Uh, Company of Heroes was slightly better, I feel like. I don't know. Company of Heroes at least was more readable. Um, very bland. So these pioneers are going to get destroyed. They're just hanging out to uh, try and stall for time. There's no need to stall for time because, so getting this thing down to like one quarter doesn't really make a big difference if your opponent's going to stick around for the next like 20 years. So um, now this bar is going back up because they retreated, but it doesn't really matter Because um, it's not like these graders are ever going to capture it So I mean obviously he did want to stall for time with the pioneers just as much as possible Get as much damage in on the conscripts keep the opponent tied up there as long as possible But uh, you might think it might have been worth it to get out of there um, Molotov catches these grenadiers as they try and go inside. I guess it went in on the house uh, It's kind of tough to tell but um, certainly I probably would have thrown it in the house if I were him because the Molotov does a lot of damage over time, but uh, unless you get lucky, it doesn't really kill somebody right off the bat. So once you throw it, if it's just at the entrance of the house, you can just run into the house and not really care about it. So good that he's spreading out his conscripts here. You don't want two conscripts bunched up on a point for any reason at all. Running around the side of the house. Oh, see, he urod right here uh, to close distance with the Grenadiers, also to get into this point right before he capped it. He didn't make it, but that doesn't matter because the German, as you notice, is still cut off from uh, this all-important fuel point, and the fuel point is being decapped anyway. So great job by the Russians um, establishing very aggressive early map control, and I don't know how he managed to cap these three things and the victory point while I wasn't watching, but that's a that's a nasty, nasty Russian right there. Good plan the way Russians should be cutting off and stuff, similar to the uh, Wehrmacht versus United States uh, dynamic in the original. Here is a Molotov. So Molotovs are cool because they'll force your opponent to reposition. What you want is them to reposition backwards because they can't fire backwards while they're moving. In this case, they just ran forwards, and this didn't work out for the conscripts because they're taking shots from both sides. But um, it did at least get them out of the green cover. Um, unfortunately, forced the conscripts back over even across the red cover into this, and now these guys are going to have to retreat. Uh, hopefully, they'll get out of there. Don't eat it. Oh, man, there's this Grenadier squad I didn't even realize flanking. Wow. Go figure. Maybe I should turn up the volume a bit so I can hear what's going on. Master volume. Yeah, that's so much better. Okay, um, so Russians still doing a good job. They've been cut off too, but uh, they're recapping this little bone thing. Is that an Ura? Yeah, I guess he Urad because he saw the grenade coming and he tried to move him, but possibly he either didn't issue the move order fast enough or his squad was just unresponsive. You know, every once in a while in Company Heroes 2, and by every once in a while I mean like 50% of the time, you'll get unresponsive squads, you'll be like, move, and they'll be like, hmm, 
you uh, you want us to move, yes? Uh, all right, uh, where would you like us to move? Oh, you've already told us. You clicked on the point on the map where you wanted us to move. Okay, well, uh, I guess we're going to move over there. You're sure you want us to do that? Yep, okay. Sounds like a plan. Um, do you want Yuri to go first or Yevgeny or... Okay, I guess you don't care. Okay, we'll just... And by that time, you've eaten like three grenades. So, it's annoying. Um, I don't know. More responsiveness would be good. Just move right when I click. When I click, I want it to move. I don't want you to go find cover or something. So here we go, another fire up. This time they do dodge the grenade. German cancels the grenade. If you have your sort of grenade throw in progress, then you move, it'll cancel the grenade. Right now, it still spends the munitions. So that's hopefully a bug. Uh, <laughs> there's no reason to let people, Ooh, Molotov goes in on a dead guy, so adding insult to injury. Uh, there's really no reason to cancel your grenade if it's just gonna take the munitions. I guess like by canceling it, you let that one guy stop throwing the grenade and start shooting like a second earlier. So that's like, a thing, but um, generally I would say don't cancel your grenades at all until they fix the bug where it doesn't uh, take your munitions. This is pretty cool. Um, I've found in the past that if I look away and look back, oh, just kidding, they're still there. This is like that part in Bioshock where those, in Fort Frolic, where those people are dressed up in plaster. And they're not moving. And that's a video game. Hoorah! So good use of Ura by I am Chets. Let's swap over to I am Chets heart, and still has a fair amount of munitions. Soviets uh, not hurting for munitions at all. He's had this point captured in the middle, so you see he has 32 munitions income compared to only 21 for uh, his opponents. So it's a, he's affording Molotovs and all this stuff. Again, Molotov pushes people forward rather than backwards. Does keep them out of cover, but ideally what you want is pushing them backwards because as they're moving backwards, they won't be able to fire, and you can even chase them if you want and. Uh, so it's not like pushing them backwards is going to have to take them out of range. When do these turn on? When? So I think when a blizzard's coming, these lights turn on, because they're the prettiest things in the entire game. Look at that. It's just this nice yellowish orange glow. And then they turn off soon, and I don't understand. Right? Like, leave them on. It makes your game... See, look, they're off now. Just, it's like, they're on for 10 seconds during every game. Why? Okay, so we're probably going to see a Molotov into the shack. And there's a Molotov into the shack, so they get out of the shack, and woohoo, look at that burning! Bleeds out a little over the edges, and that, no, that's painful, ooh. German player, Austair player, wasn't paying quite enough attention, and oh, loses on the retreat, down in the red cover, doing a little dance, doesn't matter, you're dead, you're dancing while you're dead. And goodbye, Pios. So it's looking nice for the uh, Soviets, they can pull back from these Grenadiers if they know they're coming, and... I was about to turn on Fog of War, but that wouldn't really help. Obviously, he knows they're coming now. Um, thinking about a Molotov, are you? Are you thinking? Nope, you're just retreating. He wanted to decap the BP, but... One of the annoying things is that when you hit the retreat button, it stops capturing. So, like, let's say this was most of the way captured, and you were here, and you hit retreat. They can't capture it as they're running back uh, through the point. And believe me, I have mistimed retreats by, like, a quarter of a second and not capped a point, which is the most annoying thing in the world, because then you run all the way back to the base. And the point almost immediately takes down interesting doctrine chosen from the Soviets guards rifle heavy mortar mark target um, command tank and then repair your crew on the battlefield and uh, we have a sniper out too from the Soviets so that's hotkey scout sniper and by sniper I mean sniper squad the Soviets are bros or sisters but no sisters right now we have a bro bro team um, bro team a funny YouTube channel you should check them out uh, but still pretty excellent map control on the Soviets part. They don't have control of the North Fuel anymore. Instead, they're focusing a little on the VPs. I find to, I tend to, I, look at all these people freezing. Come on, get me your fire. This isn't that hard. Um, I tend to, yeah, there you go. See, everybody's by fires, except these guys are um, following back, but they're not frozen yet. So I tend to go for VP. Who? these conscripts are going down. Down, down, down. Oh, that's bad, Should've retreated. And um, also a weird choice buying guards rifle before seeing the opponent invest in a vehicle. Um, let the go, this cart's flying all around. This is just a German blitzkrieg pushing the Russians off. That The problem with the Russians was he was fighting in piecemeal. All his infantry squads were getting pushed off one by one. Was probably relying on a sniper squad to get some damage in on those grenadiers. But yeah, it looks like the sniper squad spent most of that fight repositioning. Only has three kills. And three kills does add up versus three grenadier squads, right? That could force a retreat on one of the grenadier squads. But um, not really happening. Please micro your unit into this. 
fire. Uh, this is what I'm talking about when I call the blizzards an APM tax. So all he has to do is move slightly over here. His units would be warmed up. Um, do we have any other freezing people on Siberians? Um, oh, actually a lot of freezing people. Let's see. This, uh, yeah, they just have to micro over there to warm up. Um, these guys don't have to micro anywhere. These guys just had to micro over here to warm up for a second or two. It's not like you're ever going to really be bereft of fireys till the uh, mid game and the end game. Um, if so, even if someone wants to destroy the fires, like purposefully, uh, they're going to need to use a tank or something. So that has to come out first. Ooh, nice Molotov. That has to, oh, that has to come out first. And then they have to have enough free time to go around squashing fires. And they're probably going to, um, not going to have enough free time. Because obviously, once your vehicle comes out, you want to be using your vehicle. So we do have a light vehicle out. Uh, interesting choice from Siberian. Probably assumed, well, I don't know what he assumed. Perhaps assumed his opponent was going to go clown car at some point. Uh, and then load snipers up into the clown car. Fairly popular tactic. By the way, German's taking almost the entire map. Bad misread of his opponent, though, on Siberian's point. Because... Uh, actually what hit, well, Siberian actually knew these guards actually existed, although I suppose he could have bought the scout car before that, but, um, in any case, the scout car really only useful if you upgun it and then, um, let it attack your opponent's light vehicle, because that will do it. Um, that'll kill a light vehicle in one or two volleys, usually two volleys, but, uh, ooh, nice grenade goes in from the, uh, okay, see, look at this. Company heroes, too. You can just crawl straight up while you're suppressed and throw a grenade, even if you get suppressed all the way over here. Forces the MG42 off. Um, Siberian was baking on the MG42, actually doing something. No, it turns out it suppresses them just enough to let them throw a grenade at you in your fight. And that was a rifle grenade to try and stop them from chasing, but, uh, didn't do anything. Let's just check to make sure I'm right. Yeah, rifle grenade on cooldown. Okay, um, so finally took the map back for the Germans, so things are looking up there. Uh, but again, reinvest in this thing. So the other reason to buy these is maybe to hunt down snipers, but... Uh, the damage versus infantry is just not really impressive. I saw a post on coh2.org, some guy whining about how the uh, Russian M3A1 or whatever um, half track, or not not a half track scout car does a lot more damage than the German scout car. And hmm, who was it? Sefa who replied and said, "Yeah, I agree. The scout car should maybe get a slightly better gun so it can." chase down snipers and stuff because as it stands you try and take chase down these snipers if you upgun it you're fucked it's never going to kill an infantryman again in its entire life but um you know even at even without the upgun it has some trouble killing snipers so um again the germans pushing slowly back onto the map they're up to tier one uh they've got some panzer grenadiers out and of course the scout cars out from tier one panzer grenadier is going to be really useful now that the opponent has committed a bit to guards rifle um, in terms of vehicle tech from would I am chess, we do have a tank of a battalion. Um, normally you would see a T-34 out of here, but, and actually we can build a T-34 because he's smart. T-70s got slightly more viable. I used to say T-70s were worthless. They're slightly less worthless. They got buffed. Their accuracy against infantry went up. I think their health went up a bit. Um, the cost might have gone up or down. I can't remember. This is the latest patch where a bunch of stuff was rebalanced. So T-70s not quite as useless. They're still going to die. Whoa! That was a ref grenade. So... Um, one of the tips that people added to my what to do against sniper videos was throw rifle grenades at them. Um, so I didn't make a point of that in the original video just because, um, is this kind of conscript going to die? No. I didn't make a point of that in the original video just because usually a player who's paying attention to their sniper, which is hopefully every player, is going to be able to micro away from the ref grenade, even if they're not paying attention, because you hear on the audio 9 times out of 10, they're like, uh, they are throwing a grenade at us, or, um, they are throwing grenade at us, or whatever, um, so you can hear it coming like a mile away because they say that like before you, before you, your opponent even knows they've thrown a grenade. Like they click the button two seconds after the game tells you they're going to do it. So that's pretty funny. Run some people over. Run some people. You don't have to be afraid of Panzer Faust. You got some engineers right here. Yeah, okay, whatever. Squish some people. Squish the Panzer Grenadiers. Oh man, you see them. Turn on fog. Oh, you don't see them. Such low sight. The sight on these control points is so small. Can't see what's capping. That's pretty interesting. Um... Yeah, so rifle grenades will take out snipers really well if you can hit, but chances are they're going to know it's coming. But, uh, yeah, if you can get a rifle grenade in on an unsuspecting sniper, they're fucked. Yes, that's it! Oh, yeah! Oh, they retreat right before he squishes. That's unfortunate. He does get... Oh, man! Wipes him out on the retreat between the conscripts and the T-34. Actually, it might have been entirely the T-34. Nice job. He does get fausted. He'll be able to repair that up pretty fast. Um, he's got two guards rifle. No, he's losing guards rifle squad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, you're dead. And you even dropped an AT rifle. That's really bad. Guards rifle fucking expensive. Look at this. 360 manpower. That's what a panzer grenade costs. And now the panzer grenades get out for 
I don't know what reason, um, could have, like, owned up this other guards rifle squad. They don't even have DP-27s. Um, mm, really unfortunate on the Soviets. So, uh, what was I going to say? The Soviets have sunk a lot into guards rifle. Something about a Panzerfaust. What's the Germans going to build? They've got a medic thing. Lichter. Lichter Mechanized Company. I think someone posted on one of my videos that said Lichter... Lechter, mechanized, whatever, whatever. I don't freaking say Deutsch. And these guys doing the dance. LMG 42 fires once, fires twice. Nails are doing that second burst. Fires a third time, fourth time, fifth time. Now he's reloading. Look, he throws a little magazine away or the clip away, and then he puts it back. So yes, every gun reloads. Um, another. Well, the scout car. It's just gonna get guards rifled in. This thing needs a repair. Where are the Soviet uh, dudes up here? Well, you can't fault him for using his uh, little engineers to run around the map and do stuff. That's what they really ought to be doing. Um, and if buys a uh, another guard rifle squad, so this is really preemptive. I think dumping all this stuff into the guard rifles. Uh, they're just not when you, when you've seen your opponent commit to Panzer Grenadiers, you know they've got. Oh, these guys are really low health. They're just trying to get a foul. They are trying to get a foul stuff. Don't know if that was worth it. Almost gonna lose the squad. That was almost really. Oh, he loses the squad. Jeez, they were like vet two. So that was a not a good idea. Okay, um, I don't even know what that plan was. It's not like you're gonna kill a T34 when it's deep within allied enemy territory. You don't have AT. You're just gonna faust it a bit. Um, I really don't know what that plan was. So, uh, nice back and forth on the map. Split 50-50. They've even got one victory point each. We have conscripts marauding deep into enemy to God, I can't click on the tactical map to move. That's the one bad thing. Actually, let's figure out if I can do that. In a second. Yeah, you can't move your camera around the tactical map. That's, uh... I don't know why that is. Why doesn't it just work like the mini map? You tell me. Tell me, people. Uh, I think that guy just died of cold. And that's a Molotov. That doesn't do anything. Again, Molotovs to force people backwards. Actually, I killed a guy, so that was pretty stupid on that guy's part for standing there. Um, but, Molotovs to force people backwards. These guys, get to the fire. Just walk, like, literally two inches here. It'll get you within the range, or within the minimum range of your, of that, there you go, of the rifle grenade. When you're fighting grenadiers, always keep in mind, if we swap over to Siberian, if you click on the, uh, whoops, if you click on the rifle, well, we can't see it. Uh, they have a minimum range of their rifle grenade, which is like this. They cannot throw rifle grenades anywhere here. We got a lot of grenades going back and forth. Boom! Take that three guards rifle. Oof. Painful. And Ur is really owning up some conscripts, too. <laughs> it takes out the fire, too, so now these guys are going to have to go up there. Um, always. Oh, yes, minimum range on the grenadier rifle grenade. So close and close with them. Uh, with conscripts, as if you weren't already doing this. Uh, now you're really going to have to repair your T-34 because we have a Stube coming out, and even more map control for the Germans, so uh, definitely pushing the Soviets back. I would say Soviets on the backhand here. They are teched up to take over the battalion command, but if we go over to their... Oh, he does have 100 uh, fuel, so he could bust out with something, but he just doesn't have the manpower. He's dumping it all into guards rifle, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and say. Um, guards rifle are pretty sweet infantry units if you're fighting tanks or light vehicles. If you're fighting light vehicles, they're the best thing ever. Like, they're the coolest. They will just destroy light vehicles. No, like you saw that first scout car, it just got mashed to hell. These guys are getting owned by these grenadiers, by the way. Um, just got, oh, now they're finally killed. Um, they will just destroy light vehicles. The guards rifle are stupendous for that, and this conscript squad's dead, so that might be looking really bad for the Soviets. Um, They'll just destroy light vehicles, and against tanks, they're fairly good. Their guns can actually penetrate, so maybe we'll see this uh, fight against the Stug. The Stug's a tough one to penetrate uh, from the front, from the side or the rear. You get much better chance. Uh, well, they're not going to get many shots off. Uh, their guns can actually penetrate against the tanks, so it's sort of like, actually, look, the Stug already kind of hurt. Look at its health bar, like, weird jumping up and down. I don't know what that means. That's, um... <laughs> That's uh, confusing. I think we just lost another conscript squad here, so now it's really, like, toodles for the Soviets. But, um, so the AT rifle, pretty good against tanks. Most importantly, they have button. Where is the thing? Yeah, I gotta beat that one, probably. Well, get that one, and I'll show some people. Why is it? Shouldn't it at least show up? This is bugged. Oh, wait, no. It's not really Okay, um, well, no, maybe it's not bugged. Maybe when they get that one, we'll see it, but... 
button is just really good because it'll make your opponent's tank not be able to move. And then you don't even have to ram it with the T-34 until after the button wears off and you do. It's always, always ram. And now we have a second T-34, so engaging with this one slightly premature. What you want is one T-34 on the field to ram, the other T-34 on the field to shoot. And he's not quite there yet. Moving in his guard's rifle, this should hopefully delay this dude from coming. Uh, that, whoa, did he just lose a grenade squad there? I think so. <laughs> um, could maybe AT grenade this thing. Doesn't even have it, though. He's upgraded Molotovs, but not AT grenades. That's an interesting choice. When do you go Guards Rifle, I suppose? You don't really need AT grenades. AT grenades good against light vehicles because they'll take out the light vehicle, and good against tanks because they'll damage the engine. You don't need to damage the engine if you can button, and you don't need to kill a light vehicle if uh, you have a uh, Guards Rifle. And that was a weird Molotov. Didn't do it. So here we go. It's the T-34 time. Where's the other one? Being repaired. No, use them in conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your... Okay, good, he's using it against the people. It did get fousted, so this is going to be bad because we lost it. Engine, and now this dude got hunted down. So now it's going to be a cat and mouse game. Can this dude... Okay, well, it's gonna... there, there goes the suspense. Can this dude hunt down the T-34? Yes, he's going to fucking hunt it down. He's going to tear it apart. Look at it. This is like, ooh, that's painful. Now drive around. Take out the campfire. You got 50 XP for running over a campfire. Good tip, kids. If you want the XP equivalent to killing like a third of a grenadier, smash a campfire. So, Soviets are fucked, and the lesson here, don't dump so much into Guard's Rifle. If you're gonna dump so much into Guard's Rifle, give them maybe P-27s to fight. Um, they'll own Grenadiers, and then even Panzer Grenadiers charging at them will take a ton of damage, and then it sort of comes down to whoever, like, wins, I don't know. Uh, typically the Guard's Rifle will actually pull that out if they uh, keep getting shot. So, don't dump so much manpower into Guard's Rifle, unless you're gonna make them good anti-infantry people, if your opponent is not going enough vehicles to make it matter. He did have the second scout car, but he never used it, right? It just sat here, sat here the entire game, because he had so many Guard's Rifle, and even if he didn't have so many Guard's Rifle, it's not like the scout car could have done a thing. So, too much dumping into anti-infantry for the opponent, um, with, oh, why am I saying opponent? These players are both players. Um, too much dumping into uh, guard's rifle, too much manpower there, could have spent it on conscripts or something. Um, and uh, yeah, just because guard's rifle are expensive to reinforce in addition to buy, so uh, it just makes your infantry fights that much more costly. So for the Oster, I would suggest maybe not grabbing some scout cars until you have a reason for it. I guess it was anti-sniper, but... Um, they just, these just get owned by everything, and they're only good if you upgun them and fight enemy uh, vehicles. It really, if you want to hunt down a sniper, you can just buy a uh, half-track, and the gun on the half-track will actually do uh, some damage to the sniper. Um, and uh, so you can chase it with that, and also you can upgrade the half-track to the flamethrower. So I hope you enjoyed this match. I certainly did. I'm going to go eat a child. I'm, just, I'm not going to.